Regardless if you've had your Android phone forever or you've received a brand new one over these Christmas Hanukkah holidays, one thing you'll notice is Android is very configurable. And herein lies the problem. There are so many bells, so many things to tick, so many things to change. People get really confused. What should they change and what should they leave alone? So today, let me show you a bunch of tips, tricks and settings that I change on my Android phone. I'll be showing it to you on the Google Pixel 4, which is Android 10. But a lot of these do actually apply to older versions of Android and other Android brands of phones, such as your Samsungs, etc. So if you want to know the settings that I change on my phone, don't worry, I got you. Let me show you what you need to know. Let's do this. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Leron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks on how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. A super awesome Android phone is pointless if its battery is dead. So I like to enable dark mode because then it uses less battery because the screen is less bright. So if you've got Android 10, simply pull down for notifications and then enable dark mode. Don't worry, if you've got an older version of Android, what you can do is find the individual applications and in lots of the applications, they actually have dark mode built in. So this is Twitter, go into settings, setting and privacy, then under display and sound, there's an option there called dark mode. Simply enable that and then Twitter goes dark. The more applications you can put into dark mode, the better. This is Facebook Messenger goes into dark mode. So if you doesn't have it natively on the phone, you can do it through individual apps. What you can also do, this is a nice little hack as well. Go into settings, go down into accessibility, then scroll down until you're going to find the option called color inversion. There we go. Right. What I want to do is enable that. And see, it puts it into dark mode, then switch it off. Now watch this. Go into the notification, the pull down notifications. And now there's a new icon called invert colors. So it's quasi dark mode made simple. Another cool thing that I like to do is go into my settings. Now this is Android 10, so I find it under display. It might be known under another name by another skin if you happen to be running another brand of phone. I like to disable the adaptive brightness. Now essentially what this does, it makes the phone brighter or darker depending on your lighting condition. I find that it drains too much battery. I stick it to about 45, 50% and that's just good enough and I save more battery that way. One of the cool features on Android 10, and I think possibly from Android 9 upwards as well, is being able to set something called adaptive battery. Essentially what this does is that the phone learns how you use your phone, learns which app you use frequently, which apps should be running all the times, which apps do not need to be running all the time because you just don't use them, and it simply handles memory and battery usage according to the way that you use your actual phone. So make sure that's enabled. Something else called battery saver. What you can do in here is to say, look, there's another option called don't schedule it, but there's something called based on your routine. People tend to forget to put this one on. If you switch that on, not only is it saving your battery, but again, it's learning the way that you use your phone and it's going to optimize accordingly. Now, another thing to do, don't forget to go to apps and notifications. As you get to that screen, advance at the bottom, and then you look at the bottom, it says something like special app access or something. Yeah, we got special app access and then click on battery optimization. What this does, it looks at all the apps. Now, some of them are already optimized. Some of them says not available to be optimized. These are typically your built in services, but things like Amazon photos. Of course, I want to optimize that. I click on select optimize and click on done my email. Absolutely. Click on optimize, click on done. And again, I'm constantly telling the phone, this is the way I use it. This is what you need to be helping me out with. So it's totally exciting getting your phone. You're setting up all your apps, but then you notice icon after icon being added. Long press somewhere on the phone, choose home settings. And there you'll see an option called add icon to home screen. You want to disable that. Don't worry, all your apps will still be available in your apps drawer. They're simply not going to pop up again and again and again, pages after page after page. What many of us Android users forget is that when you long hold on applications, it's going to show you their widgets. So for example, here is Google Maps. I can long press on that, grab my home address and effectively drop it somewhere on the screen. Now I have a shortcut to that particular widget. Now, not all apps have widgets. So you'll see when you long press, this is what you'll find. If you want to get rid of something, hold it 
and it'll right up to the top and click on remove. Now I have heard some people say, look, these shortcuts are popping up way too quickly for my liking. I want to get rid of them. Well, what you can do is go into settings, go down to accessibility, scroll down until you're going to see touch and hold delay. Now mine is set to short because I want it nice and snappy, but that's okay. You can press on it and choose yours to be medium or long. And that's going to be how long you have to hold the icon before the widgets pop up. One of the best features of Android is this do not disturb. So you don't want notifications, you don't want calls, you just want to be focused or you're trying to get some sleep. Enable the do not disturb. Now, if you're worried about missing very important phone calls, no problem. Under the do not disturb settings, you can say, look, only allow phone calls from starred people. So typically your family would be those starred people or close friends. And then you want to enable the one that says, if you're going to get repeat calls within a 15 minute period from a specific number, well, you know it's an emergency. You want to allow that to come through as well. So enable that. Now, as far as notifications are concerned from SMS, MMS, messaging apps, I don't want anything from anyone when I'm in focus mode that do not disturb. And I'm allowed to set up an exception. So for example, I want my alarms to still ring in the morning so I don't miss my morning alarm. But I don't need all those other bells to coming through throughout the night. What happens when you turn off the do not disturb? Well, then all your messages just start coming flooding in. So you're not going to miss any notifications. They're simply not going to disturb what you're busy doing. As I'm recording this video, I don't want any notifications. So my do not disturb is on. Alrighty, let's talk about the one thing that we use on our phones the entire time. And that is the keyboard. Go into your settings, go search for keyboard, keyboard. Right. And typically you would have G boards installed as your default, right? Virtual keyboard, G board, there it is. Now you can customize this as well. So go into it, click on preferences. What I like to enable is the number row. I want to be able to see my numbers just above my keys. So as I'm typing, my numbers are right there. There you go. And yes, I do realize it takes up an extra room on the screen. I'm okay with that. Text correction, oh my word, get rid of the auto correction. Stop correcting me. I still have the show suggestion strip. That's a bit of a mouthful. And I still have spell check. I still have all that. I just don't want it to auto correct every time I use a word that it thinks it knows what I want to say. Another awesome thing in the Android phone that you absolutely need to enable is find my device. You go under settings, security, find my device, and then enable that. Now, if you ever lose your phone, what you can do is open up a web browser, go to android.com forward slash find. And essentially what it will do is it will look for your phone. It will tell you when it was last updated. It will tell you the location of the phone. You can even play a sound. So if you leave your phone behind the couch somewhere, you can play a sound. And even if your phone's on silent, it will still ring. You can also secure your device. So now it's gone. You don't know where it is. You can leave a cool message like, Hey, I'll give you some money if you return my phone. And yes, here's my telephone number, obviously a different number so they can actually phone you. And that message will be displayed on the screen. And if there's no chance of you getting your phone back, of course, you can just simply erase that device completely. Whilst we're still talking security, go into smart lock. After you enter your pin, this says, look, when do you want me to keep the phone locked versus unlocked? So you can choose when I have the phone on me, I would want to keep it unlocked when I'm in a certain address, when I'm driving my car and it's connected to my Bluetooth speaker system in my car. Well, that's a trusted device. It doesn't have to be locked at that stage. There is one thing that I do disable under voice match. Click onto that. And then I disable access with voice match here when it asks for my as Google assistant, but it still enables it when I'm using my voice whilst driving. Let's keep going on the theme of privacy and security. Well, under settings, click on Google and there's an option called ads. And here you can opt out of personalized ads. Now you're still going to get ads, but the ads are not going to be based on your search, your history, your queries, where you've been. So you're still going to get ads, but without giving away too much information. Now, this one is really handy, especially if you have lots of people around you constantly looking at your screen, <coughs> um, work colleagues, uh, family. <coughs> Right, under apps and notifications, choose notifications, and then you've got something called sensitive notifications on or off. Now, this is the ability not to have sensitive information shown on your lock screen, but you can still have the notification as an icon without revealing anything that shouldn't be revealed. 
So those are the 17 or 18 settings that I changed on my phone. Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Check out some of these other cool Android tips and tricks videos down over here. Hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in those videos. Let's go.